In this first task, you'll learn a new way to add data to QGIS Desktop. You'll then set the projection for the map project, organize the data layers in the Layers panel, and change the layer names. So in Lab 2, you learned how to add data to QGIS Desktop by using the Add, Vector, and Add Raster data buttons. Now you'll learn another method of adding data to QGIS Desktop. You're going to use the Browser panel. To turn this on, I'll right-click past the Help menu, and I will check the Browser item. In this case, the Browser panel has been added as a tab with the Layers panel. I'll click the Browser tab, and I can dock this in other places if I want. I can grab the title bar for Browser and move it out and make it a free-floating window, or dock it to another portion of my QGIS GUI. To get it as a tab with the Layers panel, I can drag this back and drop it on the Layers panel and we get this tabbed arrangement, which makes it available without taking up any extra space. So with the browser panel, I get a view of my file system. I'm going to navigate to the lab data folder. And I'm going to right click on the lab data folder and add it as a favorite. It now appears up here under my favorites, so I can collapse C and expand my lab for data folder and see the data layers that are available for this lab. There are five shape files and a PDF. The PDF is there for your reference. We're not going to, it's not a GIS layer. To add these shape files to my map, I'm going to select each one holding down the control key so I can select multiple and then drag them onto the map canvas. I'm going to switch to my layers panel and I don't see any data at this point. So what I'm going to do is click the full extent button and there I see my data layers now that I've zoomed to their extent. Before I get too far into the workflow, I'm going to save my map document. I'm going to click the Save button, and I'm going to save this to my Module 4 lab folder. And I'll call this Lab 4. So you see now the map document says Lab 4 at the top. It's the name of our map document. So while I have five layers in my Layers panel, on the map, all I see are data for Canada, Mexico, and the western U.S. states. So where are the sage grouse and land ownership layers? When you can't see a data set, one approach is to make sure the spatial extent of your map window covers that data set. One thing I can do is right click on the sage grouse layer and choose zoom to layer. And I actually saw some other data sets rendering there that then get covered up. The data layers in the layers panel are drawn in the order they appear in. So the layer that's on the top of the list, Western States, will be drawn on top of the other layers in the map view. So right now we've got Western States covering everything else. To rectify this, I'll select Land Ownership and drag it with my left mouse button to the top of the table of contents. Now I can see the Land Ownership data. I'll do the same for Sage Grouse. I'll drag the Sage Grouse Current Distribution layer on top of that. And now I can see all my data layers. Typically, data layers will be organized with point data layers on top of line layers on top of polygon layers. Raster data are usually placed near the bottom of the layers panel. Next, I'll set the coordinate system for the map. Note that in the lower right-hand corner, we can see the map is in EPSG 4269, and that on-the-fly transformation is set. That's what the OTF stands for. 4269 is the EPSG code for the geographic coordinate system, which makes the lower 48 look stretched out and distorted. I want to change the CRS of the map to something that will make the geography look correct. So let's examine the CRS of our data layers. To do that, I'm going to open up the layer properties. I'll start with Sage Grouse, and I can double click it. That's one quick way to open up layer properties. It's just to double click on the layer in the layers panel. And then on the general tab, I'll see that this data set is in an Albers projection. Double click on land ownership. That's also in the same Albers projection. Looking at western states, I can see that that layer is in 4269. So we have data layers in different coordinate reference systems. So right now, our map is in 4269. So the sage grouse current distribution and the land ownership data are being reprojected on the fly into that geographic coordinate system. I'd like the map to be in the same Albers CRS of the sage grouse data. So I'll right click on the sage grouse layer 
and choose Set Project CRS from Layer. You can see the map change, and in the lower right hand corner, that's reflected down here. We're now in EPSG 5070. The Canada, Mexico, and Western States layers are now being reprojected on the fly into the Albers CRS. Finally, I want to change the layer names. By default, data layers have the same name as the shapefile. However, these names will appear in the legend, so I need to change these to proper names that my map reading audience will understand. To demonstrate this, I'll go into the layer properties and change the name for sage grouse habitat. So I'll double click on sage grouse. I'll then highlight the layer name and type in the name that I would like this to have. Sage grouse habitat. And then I'll click OK. And I've changed the layer name. The shape file name has not changed. If I hold my cursor over it, I can still see that it's being derived from the sage grouse current distribution dot shape shape file, but I've changed the name of the layer in the layer panel, and this will be reflected on the legend when we create our map. In the next task, you'll learn how to style the layers and begin to craft a well-designed map.